Jim, we heard Billy Epler talk to, uh, you know, about Jacob DeGrom right there and that they have good conversations. What could a contract extension look like for DeGrom? You know, I think this is one of the easier contract uh, proposals to throw out there because there's not more than one comp that you're going to use. It's going to be Max Scherzer's contract that you just signed last year with the Mets. His deal last year, as we know, was 42.3 uh, or so million bucks uh, over three seasons. The Groms has to be, or 43 and a half, it's basically the same amount of money on the average annual value, but you got to give him more years because he's younger. He sure is there was going to be, he, he pitched at 38 years old. So it's heavy, and there's no doubt when you look at it, 217 and a half, I think, is the total. Um, when you look at 43, you know, and a half million or so times five but DeGrom's the best and it, it, to keep him there and not let him go out as a free agent I think you just be aggressive and you throw those numbers out there and say well, we want you back here by the way no opt-out Scherzer has an opt-out in there you throw it on the table make him the highest paid uh, uh, starting pitcher or equal to Scherzer and get it done and if he doesn't want it there are a lot of good starting pitchers. Hello, Justin Verlander has a guy that would be out there that you could make an offer to, or Carlos Rodon. But I think that if you go to that number and uh, the Mets do that and are aggressive, I think there's a really good chance that you could keep him. And I think that they should at least make that uh, offer here before he has a chance to become a free agent. If he turned down that offer, I mean, he's insane. Danny, would you make that offer for Jacob DeGrom? I get what Jim is saying, obviously, with the average per year, but the length because he's younger. We know the history with him being injured and some questions about whether he wants to be here. You like that offer that just Jim put out there from the Mets' perspective? I mean, I hate to give Duke credit, but, yeah, I do love that offer a lot. I, re I think it's super relevant. I talked about this earlier. He should get the Max Scherzer money, maybe even more because he's a guy who's grown up with the organization. There's a lot of relevant pieces on this team. Jacob DeGrom is one of the most relevant relevant pieces you need premium starting pitching you need a guy who can go deep into games Jacob deGrom does all of that he's giving you his whole heart and everything I understand why he wanted to opt out he wants to test the waters he wants to get paid he deserves to get paid but also it's nice to be wanted it's nice to be called back right um, to be wooed so to speak we, we talk about that sometimes but that's what I think that he wants and so I think that Steve Cohen is going to open his pocketbook and I think he's going to pay Jacob deGrom handsomely exactly what Duke said because that all adds up. And listen, he is younger. He started a little bit later in his career, but he's got those back-to-back -back Cy Youngs. He's got top 10 finishes in the Cy Youngs for, I think, six out of his, however long he's been playing, nine seasons, whatever it is. Like, this guy is bona fide. You don't want to play against him. You do not want to face Jacob DeGrom. You want him on your team. Harp, I saw your jaw drop <laughs> as well as mine when Jim came up with that proposal. What do you think of that deal overall? I listen, if Cohen's got the money, that's fine. But, I mean, are we forgetting that this guy hasn't pitched a full season since 2019? We're forgetting he, he, he finished, missed half the year in 2021, half the year in 2022. And at the end of this year, he wasn't – He listen, he still is a really good pitcher, but he wasn't the DeGrom we saw – there for a while when he was Bob Gibson he, you know he was he comes out throwing 100 but then he seems to lose it as you get into the middle innings not lose it entirely but lose that complete dominance so I was sure that he's still that same guy I mean that I mean at the very least if I'm offering that deal I'm trying to build in some uh, some some kind of clauses there where you got to account for, for for injury possibility he probably is not going to want to do that but maybe that depends I just don't know are other teams really going to offer him that much money I, I mean I don't know. There's a lot of injury history there, and there's, right now you're not sure exactly if he's that same unhittable DeGrom anymore. Uh, listen, I think it's fair, and, and I think they, uh, you know, the hard part has been the health, right? And so we didn't get a real good feel for him over the course of the full season because he didn't pitch one. Uh, but you know, I think that when you start looking at the, at the comps, if you want you, – here's the thing. You know DeGrom, right? If you have any uncertainty about him, then you don't make that offer. But I think, though, because they, we have the advantage of him being there and being around, uh, you're banking on him being healthy. If you're having this dialogue and discussion like Billy Upler's talking about, uh, you're all in. And to be all in, to sign Jacob DeGrom, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be over $200 million bucks. So if, if you're not interested, then just part ways. And you could, by the way, make a, an aggressive deal on uh, Verlander, and you could probably get Verlander for a lot less. But I think that the Mets are in on, on DeGrom, and that's what it's going to take to get them.